it's Brian with Grove Towers again. So today's video is going to be on the Gigabyte A520M VS3H AC motherboard. We're going to do an unboxing and what would an unboxing of a motherboard be if we didn't also throw in a CPU mount? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install a CPU on it as well. And I'll get to the CPU in a moment here. So this motherboard runs about $75 before tax. It is a A520M VS3H AC. What that means is that it's the A520 chipset. It's the M VS3H model. And the AC means that it has built-in Wi-Fi. So it actually comes with Wi-Fi built-in, which is awesome, because that's one thing that a lot of people are looking for and don't get on a budget board most of the time. So. This is still a DDR4 motherboard. It is AMD Ryzen 5000 ready. It is capable of running an NVMe and Windows 10 ready. It does not list Windows 11 ready. However, it should run Windows 11 with no problems. So let's take a look and see what we get. So there is no seal on the box. So that's kind of disappointing. Looks like a quick user's guide here. We've got the antenna paddles here. So they're just little antennas. They're not the whole wired antenna. You've got two 90 degree uh, X, uh, SATA cables. You've got a driver's disc, your IO shield. And your motherboard. Now let's take a peek here and see what we get in the motherboard itself. Just a quick peek at it. I'm seeing the socket up here with your bracket that you can remove to put the regular mount to, mounted CPU cooler on. So it has four DIMMs for memory. It is DDR4 memory that it takes. That is awesome. That means upgradability is amazing on that part. I see one fan header up here, the CPU fan header here, and another system fan header here. So just the two fan headers plus the CPU fan header. You've got motherboard power, you've got CPU power, you've got your IO, which I'll go over in a moment here. And then you have your, uh, your PCIe slots. It's got two X1s and a single X16. So now on the rear, we have a PS2 for keyboard or mouse, which honestly, I don't think they even sell mice or keyboards that use those ports anymore. You've got two USB 2 ports. You have two, three, so three USB 3 ports or 3.1s, and then either a 3.2 or more likely that's the one for the motherboard's BIOS, so you can do BIOS without a CPU. It has a display port, an HDMI, and a DVI. There's no VGA port on this motherboard, which is awesome. I love that. I personally would get rid of the DVI and put more USB ports on there, but what do I know? I'm just the guy that buys it. I'm a buyer, not a manufacturer. It does have a gigabit ethernet connection. And if I remember correctly, it is just single 1.0 gigabits, not the 2.5 gigabits. So it's on the slower end nowadays, but it's capable of running high speed. So it's, it's good enough for most budget oriented motherboards. And then you've got your Wi-Fi connection here. And inside the Wi-Fi connector area is also the M2 style Wi-Fi card built in. So it can be removed by taking out a screw, removing it, and then putting in a new one if you want to upgrade. So that is awesome to see. And then we have down here four SATA connections. So you can put up the four SATA drives and it has one NVMe drive. 
connection, an M.2 slot. So only one M.2 is kind of disappointing. I would prefer to see two. There should be enough space for two on here. Worst case is one would be on the bottom, which there's plenty of space down here. But it is what it is. It is a budget board. Four SATAs and an NVMe gives lots of upgradability and, and a lot of storage options. A two terabyte NVMe drive and a two or three terabyte hard drive would be an awesome combination in this. Unfortunately, the combination that I'm going to go with is going to be a single one terabyte NVMe um, style M.2 SSD. And I'm probably going to ignore the the hard drives and not put anything on SATA. And I will be installing this Ryzen 5 CPU. Now the cool thing about this specific board is that it is the Ryzen 5000 series. So we have with us a 5000 series processor. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. I bought it at about $200 before tax. I believe it dropped to like 180 or something like that, which kind of sucked that I lost out on the $20 of savings. But overall, it is what it is. And I'm okay with $200, which is cheaper than it was a couple weeks before when it was like 230. So we have this CPU and this motherboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and show you how we do an installation of a CPU in a Ryzen motherboard. Give me one second to get a screwdriver though. Ta -da. So this is the replacement that I got for my Araya screwdriver. I was kind of disappointed in the fact that it's not the same driver that I got before. The one before was a much nicer screwdriver. It was stronger, had more torque to it, had settings for it. This one does not have any of those settings. So it's kind of disappointing, but it does work. It just takes a little more effort in some of this stuff. Just loosening these screws real quick so that I can, there we go. So now, with those two pieces removed, the back plate now comes off, but we want to keep the back plate on. The back plate is an important part of this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this down like this so that it keeps it on. The CPU. So this is a brand new CPU. So it came with the CPU cooler. If you buy it used, and save a few bucks, you will probably not get the cooler, but if you do get the cooler, it'll be used, so you'll need thermal paste. I'm not gonna show you the application of thermal paste in this video because it comes pre-applied. All right. So now with the bracket removed, we have the CPU. What we'll want to do is lift the lever for the CPU socket, and then we'll open the CPU. And it just sits in to the socket. It only goes one direction. There's a little triangle, but if you look at the socket, it says socket AM4 on it on the little black part that the lever's attached to. And you just want that wording and the wording of the CPU to go in the same direction. So it says socket AM4, and then it says AMD Ryzen 5. You just put it in so that it's that direction, and then you click down on the lever, and that is now in place. There's no need to press down or to push or to do anything other than let it drop into place. Now we've got the back cover back onto it for the CPU cooler. And then as I stated before, it's screen 
it's silk screened on so that it's ready to go. And we're just going to take this and we're going to put this let's see here, so that it's this direction. So it's actually reversed of what the CPU writing is. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we want a little bit less of the cord to go into the, the socket for the fan. So we just place this down over top of the CPU, over top of the little holes from the back cover. And then we're just gonna, I'm gonna have to get a different screwdriver. I'll be right back. My selection screwdriver is a little thin right now, but let's take a look. We'll use this little minnow kit from iFixit. Now, most of you who have been here and watching my channel for a while know that I don't often use these manual screwdrivers because of the fact that my hands don't function like they should anymore so it's difficult for me to use a manual screwdriver but I still can when I need to all right so now we have that in place you can tell that it's fully in place the back plates not falling off all of the screws are tightly in place we just did it hand tight we don't need to screw it down really hard we don't want to press too much now what I do is I take the cable and I twist it around and pull through so that it kind of more or less makes a knot, but I don't tighten the knot. I just want it to keep the cable for the fan as I plug it in and that way it stays out of the way and that way it's not going to get in the way of anything. Now there are some people that would like to see this moved up here. Four screws are easy enough to do that anybody can do it. You just take off the four screws, pull up the thing, move the shroud and put it back in. It's not a difficult thing to do. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and do it just to show you how easy it is. but it is now in place. The tying this in, in the little knot actually helps to keep it out of the way while we turn it. And it is now ready for the next step, which will be RAM. But that will be for another video. I do hope that you found the process of installing a CPU as informational. If you did, please make sure that you hit the like button down below, whether you found it informational or educational or just entertaining. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button that should be in this general area here and that way you can keep up to date on our new videos and our community section. And as always, if you have any questions about myself, the products, or the channel, make sure you leave those down below in the comments section or on Twitter, at Towers Gray. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.